Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports Talk, where we weekly cover Orioles and Ravens news. We're your host, Jared and TJ. And in this video, um, we'll be breaking down the Orioles versus Diamondback series. And this is an exciting time of the year for baseball. It's September. You know, the playoff push is happening. I mean, the Orioles are leading the division. Only, I think by this point, it's only uh, one and a half games they're leading by. But, you know, just such an important stretch down the way. You know, I think, um, you know, we got the Angels next. And then you have the Red Sox on um, then you kind of got to play a bad team in the Cardinals. And then the biggest series of the season, you know, outside of the other race, the, it's funny, our, our two biggest series in the, on the year are probably both four game series versus the race, yeah. you know? So it's going to be interesting to see how they, how they try to take care of business, you know, um, at home, you know, because I mean, the amount of, you know, stressful games we played in that four game stretch versus the race in, in late June was, it took a lot out of us. And it's kind of unfortunate that we play that race series and we're probably going to be expecting battles each four of those games, you know? And then guess what? You go right to Houston. So, no, you know. that's, that's why it's best to, you know, win these games against the Diamondbacks and the Angels right now so we can further our lead, you know, you know against the Rays. Exactly. That's a, that's a fantastic point. You know, you got to take care of the bad teams, play 500 or better ball versus the, versus the really good teams, which the Orioles are doing very well of this year. You yeah. know, I think, Every yeah. every good team we've played, you know, I don't think we've really lost to a bad team. Besides, like the Padres aren't a bad team, but like they're underperforming. You know, yeah. we lost to the Guardians. I consider that a kind of a bad series loss, but yeah. we lost Mullins in the first game. You know, yeah. so and then what else? I mean, the Brewers not a bad team. You know, they're in first place. They're not really. I mean, they blew us out that one night. It's like ten to something, and they don't really have the fantastic of an offense. But anyway, not the point. I guess the Yankee series we lost in the first. Season. But anyway, yeah. like I said, we're gonna move on from that. Um, um. So, like I said, these games are important to take care of the, the Diamondbacks are on a bad team, but it doesn't start off great. We lose the game four to two, and um, didn't offense just kind of look flat? You know, Ahern was our only eyes in the game. Um, Orioles get one in the first. Um, Diamondbacks get two in the bottom of the first. They get two in the sixth. We get one in the eighth, and that's all the scoring there is. Orioles get two runs on eight hits, one error. Arizona gets four runs on 10 hits and no errors. Our top hitters on the day, um, honestly, I mean, Henderson goes two for four with two runs scored, and, and O'Hearn goes two for four with two RBI. So that's really all of our top runners, our top uh, hitters in this game. Doubles, we get a double from Westberg, his 11th in the season. We get a double from Henderson, his 22nd, and O'Hearn gets a double as well, his 17th on the year. Um, he gets two RBIs in this game, which uh, has him up to 47 on the year. Um, Cole Irvin gets the start. He gets the loss as well. He goes five and two thirds, eight hits, four runs, four earn runs, one walk, four strikeouts, two home runs. And um, Joey Crable comes back onto the team. He goes an inning, one hit, no runs, no earn runs, one walk, two strikeouts. Shintaro Fujinami goes an inning, one hit, no runs, no earn runs, no walks, two strikeouts. And Perez finishes the, finishes the eighth inning. He goes one third of an inning, zeros across the board. Um, Pitching totals, eight innings pitched, 10 hits, four runs, four earned runs, two walks, eight strikeouts, and two home runs given up, which were the two by Cole Irvin. He gets the loss. He's one and four on the year. Just a very – the offense was kind of like a dud tonight. You know, I, I don't think Perez – not Perez. Um, Irvin did terrible, you know, but he didn't do, you know, great either. You know, the two – I mean, when you get a run in the first inning, it's not ideal to give up two runs in the first two batters, you know, to, to you know give them the lead and – I guess I, all I just want to ask, what is your reaction to game one of the series? I just want to say he wasn't, you know, he wasn't swerving today. He was crashing. <laughs> he was swerving head on, head on <laughs> to traffic. <laughs> but anyways, you know, I, I just had to say it. I'm sorry. But anyways, you know, I see this as a game of missed opportunities. You know, I mean, they only had two more hits than us. You know, we had eight hits. We had 10 strikeouts and, you know, I remember we had three doubles, um, you know, from our guys in this game. And I just see this as a game of missed opportunities. You know, when right. we get those doubles, you know, we got to, you know, you know, score those runners in, you know, right. we got to get as much runs as we can to tie the game or take the lead. And we exactly. missed those opportunities with those 10 strikeouts, you know, yeah. which is and, unacceptable. And Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you continue? Yeah, I was done. Yeah, I was done. Oh, okay. Well, just uh, to back off what you were saying, you know, I mean, the play here in the third, we got two on, one out. You know, Santander lines, um, uh, 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 he like shoots a ball in the right field that Corbin Carroll goes and catches. 
you know, he's one of the fastest guys in the game and he made a great catch. And Arias was on second. He's all the way down the third base line ready to score. And mm-hmm. then he gets doubled up. So it's like, these are the type of plays that, you know, you, I mean, you can't have these mental errors, you know, um, you know, and then right here, Jordan Westberg comes up with a runner on, runner on uh, second, you know, I think that's a Hearn. He comes up and strikes out and then Arvin Frazier comes up and strikes out, you know, it's just, there wasn't a clutch factor to us in this game. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate, but I mean, you know, we're on a two game losing streak, which, you know, it doesn't, it's not often we, we lose two games in a row at this point, you know, it feels like we're winning two, three, four games in a row, losing one, then winning four more in a row, you know, and it's been a good balance of that. And I think our, our longest losing streak so far, knock on wood is only, you know, four games. And, you know, there's such a consistency level to this team. And it, it they prove it again with a bounce back win on Saturday, seven to three win. Kind of expected to win, you know, um, with Kyle Bradish on the mound. Every time he's on the mound, you feel like you got a chance, you know, to, for him to go six. Hit. His his stat lines, I feel like all year have been six innings, two runs, like five, six, seven, eight strikeouts. You know, it just seems like he's consistently doing that, and that's why that's a stuff. You know, that's in my opinion, that's a stuff. And if he continue to get deeper into ball games, now that his innings are being stressed out even more. It's going to be an absolute huge piece for us down the line. So thank the Angels for giving us um, him for Dylan Bundy. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, like I said, going on to game two, we win the game seven or three. Uh, the Diamond Basket, two in the third, you know. Um, so there's the two runs that Bradish gives up. Um, Orioles explode for six of the fourth. We get one in the seventh. They get one back in the bottom of the ninth, and that's all the scoring there is. Um, Orioles get seven runs on 11 hits, no errors. Diamondbacks get three runs on five hits and no errors. Um, our top hitters in the day, Adley goes two for five with two RBIs and a run scored. Um, uh, let me see here. Hayes goes two for four with a run scored. Mullins goes one for three with three RBIs and a run scored. Arias goes two for four. Um, uh, and McCann both go one for four with, and they both have RBIs and they both score once. Doubles on the day. Santander gets his 30th double on the year. Arias gets his 22nd on the year. Frazier gets his 18th double on the season. And McCann gets his 13th double. Mons hits a home run his 13th on the season. It was a three-run shot. Rutschman also hits a home run his 17th on the, on the season. That was a solo shot. Um, Frazier gets his 54th RBI. McCann gets his 22nd. Mullen gets three in the game, gets up to 60. And Rutschman has two on the game, gets him off to 64. Kyle Bradish, like I said, just constant six inning pitcher. Um, go six innings here, four hits, two runs, two earned runs, three walks, but six strikeouts. His he gets the win. He's ten and six on the season. His ERA is sticking with three point zero three. Seems like it's that. After, that's what I said. Six innings, two runs, two earned runs. You know, his yep. ERA is always the same at the end. It's three point zero three. So yep. it's nothing ever special. <laughs> Dio Hall goes one in one third of inning. Um, he go, he no hits, no runs, no earned runs, one walk and three strikeouts. Jacob Webb goes two thirds. He finishes the seventh. Sorry, he finishes the eighth. Um, no hits, no runs, no earned runs, and one strikeout. Joey Crable goes an inning, one hit, one run, one earned run, no walks, one strikeout, and one home given up. Our pitching total is nine innings pitch, five hits, three runs, three earned runs, a four walks, eleven strikeouts, and one home run given up. And if I had to give my instant reaction here, let's be real here. When ALDS when the ALDS starts, at least I hope that's where we start, not in the wild card. You know, obviously we got to win the division, but let's let's say we win the division, we're most likely going to be the first seed, barring any you know crazy Astros or Mariners run that there could possibly go on. But um, when ALDS game one is getting ready to line up, I think the pitcher would probably be Kyle Bradish at this point. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just he has made like fantastic strides from last season. And Grayson's making the same stride. So we could have two aces on our team next season, homegrown. Well, I guess Kyle isn't really homegrown, but I mean, obviously Elias saw him as a top pitching prospect when we traded Bundy yeah. for him. And Bundy wasn't fantastic at the time, but you know, he still seemed like he had something left in the tank. But, you know, it's it's kind of funny that we have our two pitchers here, you know, when when we back in two thousand I want to say twelve or or 10 or well, I don't remember which year it was. I want to say maybe 11 and 12 when we drafted Bundy and we drafted Gosman back to back years, kind of to be our one, two punch, you know, which would have been part of the lineups. I mean, part of the rotation with Tillman and then 
would have had the Manny and Jones and Marcakis, Scope, Davis line up with him, you know. So we drafted those two back to back, expecting to be our one two punch. They never really worked out for us. I think God's been started to figure out towards the end of his tenure. You know, mm-hmm. he was starting to become more developed, but we were headed on a downward spiral. So we needed to get rid of him. I believe he got traded to the Braves that year along with Darren O'Day. And um, it's just funny how now we have our one two punch. One was drafted, which is funny, he's drafted by Dan Duquette. And then, um, you know, Kyle Bradish, uh obviously traded for in the new uh, regime and Mike Elias. But give me your reaction on game two. I mean, uh, yeah, game two, and if and how confident you'd be sending Bradish out for the opening series in ALDS and ALCS, probably. Yeah, so game two is a you know a great bounce back win. You know, Mullins had that you know clutch three run homer. You know, one of the heroes of the game. You know, and you know. That's what I like about this team is, I mean, and I'm gonna get into the Bradish one, but you know, just to say, that's what I like about this team is, you know, when the time is needed, we'll always have that hero. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, it's best where everybody is the hero and everybody is clicking and going on, but you know, just like how you allude to, and and almost a lot of our videos is, we don't give up. You know, there's always that one guy. There's always going to be that unsung hero or a main right. hero. You know, that's going to come through for the team and you know, and get us those runs needed late in the game or whenever. So, yep. and today it just happened to be Mullins and, and Atlee had a home run too. So, you know, I'm proud of our bounce back ability in this game, you know, and as for Bradish, you know, I, I believe I, I don't know if it was in the video or when we were talking, I said that, you know, there's not a person, there's not a picture for the Orioles that we could really trust right now. And I was wrong because Bradish is that guy that we should trust. And he's our rock when it comes to right. an ace. And, you know, I would definitely feel comfortable, you know, put him on, putting him on game one of the ALDS. You know, I feel mm-hmm. like he's our best, you know, ace pitcher that we probably had since like, you know, maybe Chris Tillman, you know, right. in the 2014, you know, playoff right. team. So I would feel People right. need to remember that Chris Tillman was really good. You know, he, yeah, he was, good. he was yeah. never recognized in award category, but he was really good, you know, so. yeah, he was good. Yeah, so I feel very confident putting him in, in game win ALDS, and mm-hmm. we're going to see him again soon. So we'll we'll see yep. how he continues to do as the right. season progresses. Right, exactly. You know, and then you need we needed that guy, you know, because what was the biggest gripe from people, you know, when we were winning games this year? It's like, oh, they have no starting pitching, and it's like yeah. now they're starting to prove to building up a rotation, a solid rotation. You know, you got, you know. Like I said, you got uh, Bradish, you got Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, probably going to be flying under the radar on most teams. He's a fantastic starter, you know. So let's mm-hmm. say that, you know, in the ALDS, you're obviously going to host the first two games. Let's say Kyle Bradish does good and Grayson does good or Kyle Bradish does bad and Grayson does good and you're one and one. So series is one and one. You only win th- need to win three games in that series. I would trust Kramer to come out in game three and throw six, seven innings. And he might not be, you know, the hardest thrower. He might not dot off the corners like, you know, some of these great pitchers. And honestly, he might get, you know, hit around a little bit, you know, not, you know, out of the ballpark wise, but a lot of hard hit balls, which I believe is 95 overall, 95 overall, 95 mile per hour um, hit or more. And, but he, it always seems to be to a fielder, you know, and then you got to remember the weather's colder. You know, so the ball's not going to travel as far. I, I really trust Dean Kramer as a game three starter, you know. And then game four and five, I mean, that's still up in the air between who you want, between Hopefully you don't Kyle get Gibson, there. how Kyle <laughs> Gibson, right, get, get, get it over in game three. But you're going to need a game four in the ALCS and World Series. So, yeah. you know, maybe at that point, you know, you throw Rodriguez or, or Bradish back out there. They might get enough rest. Mm-hmm. Um, throw Cano out there. So I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, anyway, like I was saying, you know, it's just I trust Kramer in a in a in a big way. I I would trust him, you know, and you know I I, I don't I wouldn't expect to let him down. I mean, how many times this year have we been in a series where it's like, oh, we need to win this game to win the series, and he's come out and pitched a great game, and our offense backs him up, and we win the series. You know, how many times has he done that this year? And then think about so when he pitched back at Atlanta, you know, we we that's like we're a, a team on the rise. Atlanta is you know obviously the juggernaut that they are. He comes out. And he had a few rough starts before, but it comes out and pitches great against one of the best offenses in the league. You know, obviously that's way earlier the season. Would he do that now? I don't know. But I mean, 
you know, we really go toe to toe with a lot of teams. And, you know, the, the Diamondbacks are a playoff team probably this year. So it's not like they are some slouches. You know, it's not the old Diamondbacks where it's like, you know, even well, even though the Orioles couldn't beat them in 2013. <laughs> but, yeah, they went there and got swept. I remember that. <laughs> That was embarrassing. I think Jim Johnson like blew a save in each of those games. <laughs> he was terrible in 2013. Yeah, Jim Johnson was like 53 of like 59 in save opportunities. Like anyway, that's not the point. But the point is that you know I I really have a lot of faith in our starters. And I guess I went off on a tangent, you know, or opened that up as I dropped something on the ground. But um, anyways, the rubber match in the series. Um, I just want to remind you that Sundays, the last Sunday's game was our first Sunday loss since Mother's Day. So hopefully start another streak here and we get off to a good note. We win the game eight to five. So hopefully we can win on more Sundays from here on out. Mm-hmm. Um, Orioles get two in the first. Uh, Diamondbacks get one in the second, one in the first as well. Um, Orioles get two in the second. Diamondbacks get one in the third. Diamondbacks get, Diamondbacks get two in the fifth. We get four in the sixth. They get one in the ninth. We win the game eight to five. The Orioles get eight runs on 14 hits, no errors. Diamondbacks get five hits on nine, five runs on nine hits and one error. Our top hitters on the day, Adley goes one for four with two RBIs and a walk. Henderson goes two for five with two RBIs and a run scored. Santander goes one for four with walk and a run scored. Um, O'Hearn goes two for five with two RBIs and one run scored. Mons goes three for five with an RBI and a one run scored. Arias goes two for four with walk and two runs scored. Frazier goes two for two with one hit. I mean, sorry, with one uh with one run scored. Westbrook pinch hits. He goes one for two with an RBI and a run scored as well. So a lot of hits in this game for us. Doubles. Oh, oh, Ryan O'Hearn gets his 18th double in the season. Westbrook gets his 12th double on the year. Rutschman gets number 23. Um, RBIs. Henderson gets two. He has 67 on the year. Mullins gets one. He has 61 on the season. And O'Hearn gets two with 49, up to 49 now. Rutschman also gets two. He is up to 66, and Westbrook gets one, and he has 19 on the year. Jack Flaherty just makes a kind of mid-start again, you know, um, four and two-thirds, six hits, four runs, four earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts, but two home runs given up. Danny Coulomb comes in, goes one and one-third, zeros across the board with one strikeout. He gets the win. He's five and one on the season. Cena Perez goes to inning, one hit, no runs, no earned runs, no walks, and one strikeout. Jorge Lopez comes in. He gets an, he, his first. Oh, yeah. I got to mention. Jorge Lopez is back. You know, it's his first appearance with the Orioles since uh, before the last trade deadline. But he goes an inning, one hit, no runs, no earned runs, no walks, and a strikeout. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I was just thinking about the nickname. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Ninja Cano comes in in the ninth. He goes one inning, one hit, one run, one earned run, no walks, no strikeouts, and a home run given up. Orioles pitching goes. Um, nine innings pitched, nine hits, five runs, five earned runs, one walk, ten strikeouts, and three home runs given up. Yeah. And um, before I get into anything, just give me your reactions to game three and how you feel about a great series win in Arizona. You know, this game was kind of, you know, similar to um, the second game of the series. You know, it was a tight game. You know, we were powered by a great sixth inning. You know, we blew it open. You know, and I would say the pitching wasn't really helping us in this game. But, you know... Again, you know, we had our heroes. We had our heroes come through, you know, like I said, blow it open in the sixth inning. And, you know, we allowed for, you know, our um <clears throat> our pitch our other pitchers to come in, you know, like Perez, Lopez, and Cano to come in and kind of slam the door on them. Yep. You no, know, and that's all and you know, and in this situation in this type of game, that's all you can ask for is just to slam the door open, you know, make sure there's no more type of like damage control, just slam the door open, get it over with. And that's exactly you mean, what it is. You mean slam the door closed? I mean, <laughs> slam the door open. Uh, yeah, slam don't leave it closed. open. Don't leave it open. We need it closed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. You know, like I said, Flaherty not really been making the fence most, you know, not, not making the best impression so far. Yeah. You know, obviously he's going to get starts towards the end of the year, but it's yet the point where it's like, is he even on the playoff roster? Is he going to make a start? Like, what's going yeah. on here? So, and um, I would, I will give him the benefit of the doubt just um, because, you know, that whole debacle in the, I want to say the fifth inning, um, where they say the runner's not out of the baseline, but the runner was all the way like his whole body was in the grass. And they said he was in the baseline and then Gunner has to throw it to first, and then he's safe. And then it was just such a, crappy inning and yeah. you know he you tell he was kind of pissed about you know coming out of the game and you know he's a, he's a competitor and you know i mean who wouldn't be pissed about that you know you, he was having at least started the inning with a strikeout you know 
Or I could be wrong about that. But, you know, it, it was just so disappointing because, I mean, he wasn't having necessarily a bad start. You know, I mean, seven strikeouts in five innings, not even five innings. It's impressive, you know. So he obviously was getting the swing and miss pitches working. But, mm-hmm. you know, the two home runs were kind of d- detrimental. You know, you didn't really need that. And then, um, you know, well, two, we had two of our, our pitchers come in the ninth and give up a home run. So luckily it was just one and they got the next three outs. But um, overall, a nice series win. You know, it's kind of weird, you know, because it's like it wasn't really the West Coast team. It was a nine o'clock game and then eight. I think it was like an eight o'clock game, one of them. And so, yeah, like it was just a, a nice you know, kind of bounce back from, you know, the, the game, the, the two losses in a row, you win the series, you avoid a sweep again. It's got to go, I think we get like the most, the the, the best team in, or the, mo- the, the most consecutive games without being swept in the AL or AL. I, 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 I have to look it up. I, I forgot. It's something like that, but it's like, it's like an 84. Mm. But at the end of the series, the Orioles are 85 and 51, just continuing to dominate the Diamondbacks for 70 and 67. Um, just give me your last thoughts on this series win. You know, we did what we needed to do in these games. And I, I know I probably say that a lot, but it's true. I mean, we were put in some tough situations. You know, the Diamondbacks were putting up a fight, you know, in, in every single game. And it took, you know, hero efforts from guys like Mullins in the second game, hitting a 3-1 shot. And, you know, an explosion in the sixth inning in this rubber match, you know, it was a it was a series of the heroes and they definitely showed out. And so I gotta, you know, tip my hat off to the whole roster. You know, these guys stepped stepped up to the plate and, and knew the assignment. So yep. it's a great series win. We didn't get swept. That's all you can ask for. Right. Exactly. And you should continue to, you know, add separation to the Rays. I think at the end of this series is two and a half games. So it's like just such a such a uh, what's this? What, what do you want to call it? You know, we took advantage of the Guardians beating the Rays, and um, I'm glad that we did. You know, because um, it seems like a lot of the time we win, they win; we lose, they lose. You know, it's just like it's just we need that transition period where it's like we're winning games and they're losing games. And that's just the easiest way to put it. So, um, yeah, that'll be a recap: the Orioles versus Diamondbacks. Um, you know, like I said, Orioles take care of business here. Um, and also the uh, Diamondbacks had sent out their ace on Sunday. So yeah. to be able to, to be able to knock him out, you know, I want to say it was in the fifth inning, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, he knocked him out in the sixth, but he only pitched five and one third, just such, such a key, you know, we, we played really good against good pitchers. It seems like this year, um, you know, we knocked around Shane McClanahan, I think once, um, you know, we, we took Spencer Strider deep a few times, mm-hmm. Max Freed as well. We kind of dominated him that one Friday night. Like just a lot of pitchers you can think about, you know, and um, you know, Julio Arias too. Well, he has other things to worry about at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, I, he was a upcoming free agent pitcher. So, but um, anyways, like I said, that's a re- breakdown of the Orioles versus Diamondback series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Share wherever you can to help our reach get out there. Um, don't forget to check out our Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, whatever you, <laughs> I call it Twitter still, because I mean, why would I have what I call it X? <laughs> but um, we do we usually do um game breakdowns of the Orioles and with the Ravens starting next Sunday, be on the lookout for the for that. You know, it's gonna be a little bit difficult doing it for two games, but we're gonna try to make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, especially since the Ravens are playing the Bengals the same day the Orioles are playing the Rays. So um that's something to monitor <laughs> but um don't forget to subscribe to our tiktok i had just recently posted a tiktok um and uh just it's just a quick little video of our uh, the game dub fireworks um and also don't forget to uh, sub- check out our second channel casual cinema and we're birds of prey and we're out we're out